Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. Paulina here chatting to you a little bit about this uh, full moon coming. So we do have a very practical full moon. Uh, we have a very, very emotional and kind of like a sad, sulky sky also. If you are not ready for the changes that Dragon Year would have already started to bring up. Things are bubbling up from under the surface. We do have the Sun conjunct Pluto and very close to Chiricho in the sky. And we have a very, very strong and emotional progression of planets behind the Sun. So when we have a lot of things happening, the house before the Sun and the sign before the Sun, uh, we usually have a lot of underground activity. We have a lot of annoying results. Sometimes we have a lot of very exquisite emotions and personalities we sometimes have a very inspired or very wholesome vibration also come up so the sun is backed up by quite a lot of information that we cannot fully yet reach or we cannot fully yet see so quite a lot of us might be going through a change of heart there are many people that are going through an emotional demise or um, an emotional difference maybe certain people are going through an upgrade but not everybody has the courage to admit what is actually happening in their lives. Um, for example, uh, falling in love again is very hard. Uh, doing things all over again is very hard. Being asked to be there in a very, very tight situation or having to be around a lot of people, having to speak out, having to show your power, having to be there, um, having to be courageous, uh, having to be in the spotlight is something that is not for all of us easy and it is not for all of us viable. The initiating energy is coming through as the dragon year uh, is starting to surface. We do have a lot of us um, walking out of the old and walking into the new, but this is very fragile ground because, as I said before, we are now at the end of the year because Aquarius is the 11th sign, the second to last sign. So we are just edging towards um, that part of uh, the year where we really like take the bow, take a bow, you know, say thank you. Sometimes we keep things silent during this time. Sometimes we are only hoping for something better to happen. Sometimes we're only just planting the seeds or trying to understand how we can organize our lives in a better way. So this is not at all the butch, strong and healthy start. This is more the ending phase of the year. And as the year progresses on to Pisces, and we do have Saturn in Pisces, we'll really take a bow and see ourselves through and out one door and into another reality. So as we are going through this 11th sign of Aquarius, we should really get to know each other and ourselves. This is about shaking hands. This is about understanding how well somebody has done in their life. It is great for commemorations. It is perfect for displays. It is amazing for attention. It is a really, really good time to see how far someone has gone and how far we've come as well as people, as individuals, how far you have come, how far I have come, how far our friends have come. It's a very perfect time to also say hello sometimes to something new or not yet seen. But I would be very careful uh, with this time. I'm going to also do another video for February shortly and I'll explain as to what is waiting for us, uh, awaiting us in February and why I would definitely recommend not taking that big jump, not doing that big thing and making sure that you stay away from trouble, especially when it comes to signing papers, especially when it comes to contracts and marriages, lo loans and uh, any kind of specific paperwork, being very, very careful and out of harm's way making sure that you don't enter other people's messes as well. So for example, other people's uh, ideas, other people's kids, other people's families, other people's versions of what the world is, as it is very contagious uh, during this particular time. We definitely do have a moon um, that is in Leo, of course, and it's perfect, you know, as they say, for hair, it's perfect for haircuts, it's perfect for self-esteem, it's perfect for makeovers. So I would definitely recommend staying with the previous growth so in terms of cutting your hair, I mean, it's up to you how you see things. Uh, I feel that hair is sacred um, and it's good not to necessarily have haircuts during this time. But usually people do say that a Leo full moon is quintessential for hair cutting as well as uh, full moon in Aquarius. Also, some people believe it's very good for hair and for a makeover, but I really don't trust that stuff. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I don't feel that people need to jump from one way of seeing themselves into another. So, for example, having radical makeovers, having a completely different style of life, 
having a totally different type of reality may not be real, it may be sugar-coated. So did you buy something you didn't need to buy? This is a very, very interesting time. Did you get sold into a story? Did you, did you get bored by somebody? So for example, somebody um, told you something was a good idea. Uh, somebody sold you a life path or a plan. Maybe you saw many people on social media networks or on TV living a life that you can only imagine and maybe something has happened and you've decided to give away what you do already have and have been mastering for a long time in order to um, put yourself into the next reality. Um, some people are really trying to put their best foot forward as it's always going to be very much about exhibitions. Um, Aquarius is a sign of exhibitions, is a sign of galleries, the sign of letting people know how well you've done and showing your wares. It is the final say. This is your final say. If you can imagine Aquarius is about displaying your best of the best, is about uh, the spoken word for some people, it is about art, it's about design, it is just about you as a person, it's about you as a human, it's about also what you thought you would master at the end of the day. And the Leo full moon is going to definitely kick us up into that next level. So for example, you've been gardening and now you have even greater yields or even greater ideas um, as to where to take your garden. For example, you've been uh, saving money and now it's probably like a crowning glory of seeing how much you've actually got saved. Um, now, it's like a crowning glory time, truly, with this Leo full moon. It's about having a say. It's about wanting to be spoken to uh, better. It's about wanting to have better friendships. It's also about having conversations that are up a notch. Uh, wanting to be treated better by your partner. It's about wanting to be spoken um, better by your children. It's about having more relevance in a game. It's about upgrading and up marketing uh, what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking about. It's about doing a lot better than you've done before. So it's all about yield. It's about the final product. It's about, uh, I suppose, the flower or the fruit. Um, to me, it also looks like it's about, yes, it is about the fruit of our labor. It is also about um, what you say at the end. This is the final word. So for example, um, at the end of the day, I could say, this didn't happen for me. Or at the end of the day, you know, I've counted up my finances or I counted up uh, everything in my life or I saw who my partner really was or who I was and I have this as my experience has shown me uh, this happens so for example you could say at the end of my schooling at the end of my job at the end of my partnership or relationship or at the end of my um, employment at the end of my I don't know creative career you could definitely say a few final words and it is definitely about being crowned and it's about respecting those words yourself. Maybe it is not hard to see where you are not uh, reaching an audience, where you are not reaching somebody or where something has not uh, got any chance of happening. So for example here, um, it could be that a person is trying to have a baby and they're really seeing that no matter what they do, they cannot biologically carry that baby, for example. Uh, another thing that could happen is a person trying to upgrade or update their life and no matter how much time or energy they put into um, their body or their life or their view or their lifestyle, nothing really changes. And we have to really understand that now. No matter how much I've spent on this, it never really happened. You know, um, it could be many things, you know, no matter how much I try with my child, they don't hear me or no matter how many times I've tried uh, to do this uh, yoga pose, I cannot do it, you know. We have to understand the limit and the stretch as well. So in some ways, I feel there's going to be a natural crowning and a waking up. In uh, some families, in some tribes, in some situations, um, there's going to be a natural update. And it's going to just go from here to here. It's natural, it's nice, it's risk-free. It's sometimes a little demanding, you know, so if you can imagine uh, going from one position at work to the next, um, going from a simple superficial friendship to a very deep and powerful friendship or bond, um, going from engagement to a marriage, you know, so it's a very simple from here to here, but notice what happens. So uh, Leo doesn't like being obstructed. Leo uh, would not care if things were too hard or too sulky. So for example, a long yard, a long haul, a traumatizing, traumatic experience, a sadness will not be tolerated by this particular alignment in the sky. So it's not about like through thick and thin. 
you know, I'm spending my last dollar on this, or I'm trying so hard, you know, so this kind of feeling of being sulky, angry, um, stricken by, stricken by sadness, or stricken by fear, um, anything dark, gloomy, soggy, bad, um, uncomfortable has to leave. So we have to now understand where things have gone too far. Also, um, maybe for some people it is about certain infections, you know, maybe it's about like, for example, ulcers or stomach issues, maybe it's about parasites, maybe it's about any kind of uncleanliness. Also notice when things are just bad. Um, a bad smell is very easy to notice during this time, a bad feeling, a bad habit, um, a bad sense of self, uh, low self-esteem. It's like no matter how much I try with this person, they make me feel worse and worse. Or no matter how many of these uh, things I put into my cupboard or how well I'm doing with these people or how, how, how badly I want to change, I can't change. So we have to understand there is a need for that to be over. And we have to start again. If you are in a very bad cycle, for example, you have an addiction or you have a pain or you have a longing and it just will never go away, will you please find another way to do it? So, for example, uh, if you to no avail cannot change uh, the sequence that is going on as Aquarius is all about sequencing, um, it would be so good to have the courage to find out what is actually going on and to be able to heal that and yes, for a lot of uh, people, the pressure is on you. And I uh, do see that there are some very, very amazing people that are helping others, but it would be nice to do things by yourself. You know, so for the betterment of all people in a story, can you take responsibility um, and the crowning glory for your life? Because the crowning glory of the Leo moon is not just about being great and well off. It's also actually about the healing that sometimes one needs to be able to um, accept this next um, feeling in life, this next upgrade. It's not like a very, very easy time. It's not a very easy one because it's not just about wearing the crown. It's not just about being great. It's also kind of um, about being um, slightly out of whack and then understanding that with the next phase comes uh, the next phase. You know, for example, working more hours means getting more tired, uh, you know, having to do more um, online means having to have more rest, you know, having to cook food for a larger family means having to buy more produce and spending more time in the kitchen. So there is a moreness. There is a moreness. I want more. Or I have more. Or I finally gained uh, this feeling. Or I finally gained this position. Or I finally have uh, started to change, you know. But here we also have to catch up every single part of you. So, for example, if you are offered more, you might be also expected more off. So, um, we have to see you through here. Maybe you need some friends. Maybe you need some guidance. Maybe you need some research. Maybe you need um, some people that can help you and give you that sense of hope. Do you have the stomach for it? Do you have the guts for it? So, it's also um, about long haul and strong long-term development because these are fixed signs. This is not just about, yay, I'm a miracle, I get to wear the crown. Can you wear this crown for a sufficiently long time to be able to establish yourself as a person? Would you be able to still serve in this position years later? So, this is something that I really enjoy about life. It's something that I um, have, uh, to a degree, mastered, I would say, um, how to last and how not to break yourself down. So this is not just about stepping into the role, this is about carrying this regalia, or this is about carrying these gems, or carrying these uh, positions, handling these new neighborhoods, handling this lifestyle for a really long time, and not caving. So this is not about like stepping into a door, oops, that hurt me, and I'm gonna go somewhere else. It's not about making a mistake now. Uh, mistakes are very cruel. Dragon here has a cruel side. If you made a mistake, if you went to the wrong person, if you tried something too fast, too soon, if you took on too much responsibilities, if you've done too many errands, um, if you've been uh, softer than you had to be, or if you've been a bit harder than you had to be, it's not a very easy time. And everybody is an individual in this. Every single person in this type of year, in this type of sky especially, has a completely individualistic perspective and point of view. And we have to somehow bring it into the group. So this is not just about you, 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 uh, doing the best you can. This is also kind of about like this amazing fetching way in which each one of us has, I suppose, an ego 
uh, has a chance to tell you something. Uh, Leo is kind of the sign of ego to a degree. And uh, maybe not in a good way sometimes, and sometimes in a powerful way. So it's okay. Uh, we're all human here. And it's just about meanings. And it's about maybe bothering other people or not bothering them. It's about dancing with people or not being able to dance with them. It's about having things come to a, a nice conclusion. I get what I want and you get what you want. It's about shaking hands. It's not about contracts. It's just about being friendships, like being in a friendship, sorry, <laughs> being, being friends. Um, and to a degree, it is not going to go with us unless a whole uh, body of people that you're working with really likes it. So this is like Aquarius, Leo, and I'm sorry if you don't like this. I'm, I'm sorry if you are a natural born um, loner, uh, but to a degree, uh, quite a lot of people are going to be in a very weird place if they don't have any kind of um, relationship with the world you know so this is about how you are looking to other people sometimes it is still about um, having a partner it's still about having friends having neighbors having people that believe in you and to a degree it is also about having a certain level of conservatism that is still left over from the rabbit here guiding you through so it's about uh, outcomes it's about law and order it's about systems it's about being healthy and happy and fine it's about making the right impression it's about using the right words and language. It is definitely about coming of age for some people and understanding, look how far you've come. Look, you've been here and now you are there. So a lot of it is about platform building. A lot of it is about friendships and it's about networks. Um, in the world of commerce, in the world of uh, society, in the world of um, you know longing for people to connect with, in the world of dating and romance, it is all going to be kind of interdependent. And we do have Venus on the MC. She's just in the first couple of degrees of Capricorn. And she's going to be very young and beautiful and powerful. And she is kind of ruling this as well. So Ceres Venus uh, combination there with Follis and Psyche quite close. Um, We're not going to have to maybe get it all together now. But for quite a lot of people, there's going to be a pull for perfection and perfectionism and trying really hard to match it all and to give it all of it you know so to give it all your gusto then I'm also kind of uh, asking this other question as we are ending the year do you really want to give it all you know so I feel that some people are smart and they're a little bit more quiet and a little bit more sparse people that are doing things under the table people that are doing things um, underground, people that are, for example, saving their money, and they know that they can do it, but they won't do it because they're waiting for a special time, are probably the smarter kind of people, but they're not as fun. So this is kind of like depends on you how you want to live your life. Some people really want to be cherished. They're very young. They're very attractive. They're very altruistic. They rely on other people to keep them going. They rely on maybe the matrix or they rely on fun or they love the life they're living. They want a momentum and they don't care how much it costs for them to experience it or what they've got to be in the story. And then there's also these uh, older souls uh, or smarter souls that know this is not the end, and this is not what I want, this is not it, you know, so sometimes, for example, you might be given an idea, you might be put into a game, and some people wouldn't be amiss by saying, actually, yeah, I can see how life is naturally putting me on a pedestal, or naturally putting me into kind of like a vortex with other people, or I can kind of see where the nucleus of the situation is starting to take me, I'm not really sure that I want to invest all my money, all my time, all my career, all my finances here. I don't really feel like I want to do it right now. Or I don't want to do it all again because, yeah, there is repetition. Aquarius is not just a sign of the future. It's also about slightly repetitive tribal behavior and sometimes things that are expected because there is a boring part of Aquarius. It's not all new and spiritual. There is usually kind of a boring... Um, get it done kind of feeling to some parts of what Aquarius offers during these degrees. So we have to kind of be wise and we have to uh, let wisdom lead us because although um, we can do probably anything that nature would somehow present to us and we can be in many of these different groups and gangs and vortexes or ideas or we can change faith like from one way of looking at life to another, we can change uh, our bodies, we can change our friends, we can change our 
makeup style, we can change many, many things. We can go from this home to another. We can make many, many people also look our way. We can catch a lot of attention during this time and get together, even get strong as a group or get together with one another. I probably trust more that very wise person that would sit down and have a look at their life in secret or in silence and do it for themselves. Like, okay, I know that the group expects me to, for example, travel for this or do this or do that. I know that something out there or somebody out there is expecting me to do some very fancy footwork. But, you know, yet again, I understand. And this is when my previous uh, forecast would have been handy for some people. Um, I understand the bone and marrow of my world. Like, for example, I know what aging is now. Or I know what scarcity is. Or I had time when I had no money. So to spend all this money on travel or to spend all this money on uh, my friends, I don't think I could do this. You know, I really know now what my feelings are. I really know now what my uh, height is in society. Or I know where the foolish part of me has struggled before. Where the grown-up part of me has um, uh, found faith in itself for what it has comprised. You know, so this is basically not new to me. I'm sure that it's not new to you if you have, you know, the attention span to, to listen to, to me for so long. Thank you. Um, in a certain way, I feel uh, some of us um, have a certain very good and very humble internal flame. And it's to do with the ancestry. Maybe for some people it's about Buddhism or Christianity or another representation, another cultural group or Islam, any cultural group. For certain people it's about uh, money and savings. For some people it's about home and family. For some people it's about um, time. For some people it's about their belief in the world today. In some cases, it is about understanding where society is going or where it has gone so far. So in a lot of uh, places, we might need a very cruel and heartless strategist to keep us on board. And this is why, because as we are walking into February, we will be eventually facing Saturn. We have to understand, we'll go through a lot of up and downs, up and downs in February until we realize it. And this is where we have to really give respect and we have to really understand that which mattered. And this could be ancestors, it could be uh, finances, it could be the way that the world works, it could be your own bones, your own body, understanding of any infrastructure, understanding of any platform, understanding of a company, understanding of the core or the heart of the group, understanding of what it really means. And this is probably not going to come today. So that wisdom is probably not going to hit you right now. And Leo Moon is kind of slightly unwise. It's more flamboyant. It's more like uh, spicy. It's more flavored than it is uh, significant. You know, so the moon doesn't really like it in the fifth house. Um, it doesn't really like it there. The moon feels comfortable in um, Cancer, you know, as she will be, you know, for part of the day. But then she'll go to Leo. And Leo is not about time. It's not about safety. It'll be a silent uh, change for some people that are more contained or connected and for a lot of us it'll be a push or there could be some um, rubbish on the inside that sometimes wants to come out uh, there could be a very very uh, sick idea sometimes or a very predatorial uh, concept that could come through during this type of time um, but to put it together I would like to maybe return you to my uh, January video and this is how come it was so stark I was talking about trying to find the compassion for yourself and then trying to find a chronolinear reality um, in the midst of it all, in the midst of this flurry, in the midst of all of these ideas and all of these thoughts and feelings, there is going to have to be some kind of a guru in you or a very, very good significant person for you or like a group member or somebody that you can count on. Sometimes it's about uh, collected funds, sometimes it's about um, history, sometimes it's about what you've made in, in the past, sometimes it's about ancestry, um, to be capable of holding this uh, timeline together. It's not just about will, it's not just about free will, it's not just about like having a fight, it's not just about doing the do. Although I love these altruistic, sparkly, um, crazy feelings that could be sometimes coming up during these days. Um, it doesn't feel to me that it's actually really all about um, this voice, uh, this voice of reason or these feelings even. It's more just about knowing now how to be. And if you are um, 
maybe like a computers person or you're, you're a geek or you're a scientist or you, you, you know maths pretty good um, you might actually understand what I'm saying so it's um, about um, recognizing the sequence and I'm coming back to Aquarius sequencing and also the stellium and Capricorn understanding knowledge understanding karma understanding how things actually work and if they don't work what it takes to fix them so I suppose um, or suspect that the most poignant person in the story the most uh, alchemical person in the story is maybe not the one that wants to jump up and down jump for joy and grab their bag and tear at reality although that is really endearing and that's really new and for some people it might be happening in their life for the first time it's like wow I met somebody and for the first time for the first time like this feeling of youth and abundance and wild abandon is um, very very nice and very neat but at the end who's got the last laugh so I'm going to just like prepare you for this a little bit and I know some people don't like this but I'll try. We, we're still kind of uh, with a lot of Capricornian influence during this time and we are heading towards Pisces with Saturn at the start. So this is also very Capricorn. So I'm going to try and help you. So the one thing that really uh, pulls me into this year and I'm interested in it is because I, I was born in 1985. So I'm in the year of the wooden ox. Um, this is a wooden dragon year. And why I really love it is because this uh, symbol of wood what it represents to me uh, right now also as a being, as I've been researching this a bit, it's warmth and it's kindness and it's kind of hollow but it's also very gentle and it knows how to progress. It's about teaching the right things, it's about going in the right direction, it's about having the way, it's about also having a wake up call after wake up call and then joining the dots and making sure that you don't have to have too many wake up calls, you don't make too many mistakes. It's a really wonderful energy of the craftsman or a person that does things over and over again. As you become better at your life, as you become better at your philosophies, as you get good at your art, as you get very, very good at your skills, um, you improve yourself through trial and error. And once you have it, you don't make mistakes anymore. You already can predict what to do. Like, for example, if you don't practice a craft, but you are a really good cook, you would know it. If you are a really good speaker, you don't have to read with a paper in front of you. You can just bombard anybody. You, know, you, you can just say it. Um, that's wonderful. If, if you're a good dancer also, if you um, have no ego in it and you kind of already know what's going to happen because something inside of you has been etched and uh, finessed enough to remember, you don't need a practice shot. Like for example, you don't have to sketch things out carefully uh, to be able to do an underpainting and then another painting, like a middle painting and then the other painting over the top. You can already go with a big brush, bright colors, you already know exactly where it's going to be. So the feeling to me is um, it is up to the level of expertise, but I don't want to make you feel bad if you don't, if or shy, if you don't feel like you're an expert yet and life is just bamboo, bamboozling you with this um, very uh, epic moon. Um, I think that in a sense, um, we all have that yeah, Christ consciousness within us, if, if you say. Uh, we all have uh, the hallmark of compassion within all of us, um, if you like. Um, we can also say that tell the story our own way. And each person, even if they're only 12 years old, um, yeah, they all have something within themselves that is meaningful and that has reached a certain point of security within itself through experience and through a certain confidence that we gain only after we know something. So there is a masterful energy, there's a masterful aspect to all people and they already started this year, uh, this dragon year, with that, well it's not quite dragon yet, not, not officially anyway, they started this year, I could say numerical year, sure, um, with that uh, catalogue of life experience, with the know-how, with uh, a bank of information at least, or a bank of media, or the how-to-do list, um, they all understand what that was always so there is a quintessential mastery to every single person today there is a quintessential power which is exactly what this whole year is about it's just about maturity it's about power it's about development it's about concepts it's about real realities it's about knowing how you feel and also understanding how you're going to be it's about legacies to some people for some people yes and it is also about not feeling afraid or not feeling sad about the past 
and building is great for bodybuilding, is great for workouts, is great for making a next step in your already existing life. Um, but it isn't quite ready yet. So I'm also seeing that there is a lot of kind of squeaky energy. The year hasn't yet come to a state where you're developing those muscles, you know, that uh, Dragon Year is willing to give you, teach you uh, how to gain during this time. We are yet little, we are small, like our wings are spread wide. I see some people are very, very like ready and very um, strong about who they are, but we're going to get knocked down a few times. So I want to prepare you for that. In terms of involving in something too deeply uh, or richly, in terms of stepping into completely unnecessary experiences and doing things uh, foolishly, I would probably take that away for, for a while and try to build on you. And um, the backup is important. You know, for example, if you are making something online, like, like you're building your website, back it up. Um, if you don't have enough, um, you know, and you're thinking of spending it all on some new thing, some new venture, very careful, very careful. And it's not romantic now, maybe. So, like, maybe I've taken that away from you with this reading. It's not that uh, enticing at the end of the day. It's just more about making that cornerstone. Maybe it's about being placed at a new, more robust level. It's about having... For some people, you as the talk of the town, for some people it is about gaining the risk factor. And some people it's just about gaining popularity, uh, gaining transcendence, gaining concepts that weren't there before. And in certain situations, it's not about how well you come off or how well you've come across even to yourself. It's just more about people knowing you now and not making fun of you in some cases or in some cases, or you're not feeling so kind of like dull or in the middle, um, having your own platform, having your own gatherings, having your own face, you know, having your own identity, having your own power. So it's not for everybody to notice a person these days. It's not for everybody to support them. But there is going to be a definite no-show in some cases, and there's going to be a wow factor for certain things. And um, yes, my closing few notes, maybe uh, definitely pay attention where you didn't get anything and people ignored you, like you have not really, you know, put things together that well and nobody could help you. Um, know where you are just like uh, slimy. It's almost like nobody can hold you. It's like nobody wants to buy your book, for example. Nobody, nobody cares if you do something or you call somebody and they didn't answer you, didn't respect you. Um, let it go. Like, phew, let it go. Don't feed something that is crying. Uh, sulky, as I said before, this moon does not like sadness. This moon does not like uh, like draining, like difficulties. It doesn't. It doesn't want to feel bad. And uh, also another thing I'm supposed to do is to notice when you naturally have a greater respect. You naturally have a larger audience. You have a stronger, more robust network of friends. Or if you have been um, told that you have something, for example, people telling you that you have a great smile, you have incredible talent, or you're so nice to be around. All those niceties, uh, keep them going, and then find a way to feel more real, because even though it is nice, and it's fluffy, and it's slightly challenging, and sli slightly emotional, hormonal, could be very hormonal, this kind of moon, it is one of the luckier moons for also people that don't usually go there, like, for example, this is... Uh, your first joy, you know, like finally being noticed or finally, like somebody drew a picture of you and you feel incredibly happy that somebody did that or somebody called you or somebody said something nice to you on the street, you know. So this is about nutrition. It's about social and spiritual nutrition as well. And then at the end of the day, don't tell anybody if you're planning something big. Don't put it into anybody else's ideas. Don't make it a big deal. So like all the big ideas, all the big orchestrated stuff, leave it for maybe the end of Aries as we're going through the North Node and Eris, the sign of uh, respect or the sign of confidence. Leave it to that time to see if it makes or breaks because now there are certainties and we go through a fixed sign and some things will not be able to handle the pressure. We need strategies. You know, it's not just about being bright-eyed and bushy-tailed anymore. And for certain people, they have to realize 
They can't live on a shoestring. They cannot live just being in the midst of people being dependent on their mom or dad. They can't make it if they don't get that paperwork or they will not make it if they don't make somebody of themselves. So definitely it is a call. Uh, it is a call and uh, it's a call to stand tall and be proud and be respected by now or to have a respectful way in the world. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, little reading. If you'd like, have a look at the uh, section below, uh, the caption below, and it should have some handy information on there. Thank you very much and enjoy. Bye.